I am so glad you're here for another episode of Mechanism Monday, where every Monday we write out the electron pushing arrow mechanisms for different chemical transformations. In last week's video, I asked if you could solve the mechanism for this organic transformation. So if you haven't had a chance, pause the video now and try it independently. And make sure you stick around to the end because I'll give you another mechanism to solve for next week's video. In this mechanism, we're creating what are called orthoesters, which are often used as protecting groups in organic chemistry. And they're identified by having one carbon attached to multiple different alkoxy groups. Groups. And again, these are called orthoesters. In our reaction, you're told that you have some R group, which could just be any sort of alkyl chain, attached to a nitrile, which is a carbon to nitrogen triple bond. And this functional group has a lone pair of electrons on the nitrogen, which can be protonated by whatever acid we're using in this reaction. And in fact, that is the first step in this reaction, where you're actually just going to protonate that nitrogen, which is subsequently going to make it positively charged. And importantly, that is going to effectively make this carbon very electrophilic. I often refer to this as turbocharging the electrophilic carbon. And it makes it so electrophilic that even something like an alcohol, like in our case, methanol, can act as a nucleophile and come and attack that carbon, which is gonna serve to kick over some of these pi electrons over to the nitrogen. So the product of this transformation is gonna contain our R group attached to our carbon, which now has a carbon to nitrogen double bond and it has a hydrogen. We call this an imine, typically when you see a carbon to nitrogen double bond. And the rest of that alcohol is attached here, where now we have a positively charged oxygen because it's gonna contain three bonds to, car to oxygen and just a single lone pair. And remember that when we used an acid to protonate nitrogen, we generated the conjugate base. So for example, if he had used HA, for example, and then this had taken a proton from this acid, this would have generated the conjugate base. And that conjugate base can now be used to come and do a proton transfer where you abstract this hydrogen to leave us with our carbon to oxygen that is going to be neutral. And once we've done that, we can actually undergo another proton transfer, except for this time, what we're going to end up doing is because now we have this neutral nitrogen and we also have this neutral oxygen, what will happen is that that acid that we regenerated by deprotonating this former alcohol can actually come and actually protonate this nitrogen to make it positively charged. So the product of this transformation follow, following two subsequent proton transfers is going to be a positively charged nitrogen where we have protonated it and now we have this methoxy group coming off this carbon. And again, just like before, when we had this carbon attached to nitrogen that was positively charged and we turbocharged the electrophilicity of that carbon, we've actually done the exact same. So another molecule of methanol can come in and now serve as a nucleophile and attack this carbon kicking over these pi electrons to make our nitrogen neutral again, but also simultaneously giving us a positively charged oxygen because now we have placed this species here, now it's gonna be positively charged, and that's how we get our second alkoxy group located on this carbon, and now we've generated an amine located at this position that is gonna be neutral. So then again, just like we did a proton transfer to make this oxygen neutral, and then we reprotonated the nitrogen, if you follow that same proton transfer sequence, then eventually you'll end up with another positively charged nitrogen that is gonna be attached to this carbon, because now it will end up with three protons on it. And now we'll have these neutral methoxy groups attached to carbon. And in fact, what will happen again is that this time when another methanol comes in, it will come and attack this carbon, except for also now we've generated a good leaving group. So now this ammonia can leave as a leaving group. And then following a subsequent proton transfer, that's actually how we get to our final product, which again is this orthoester. So then the sequence of events in this reaction is gonna be protonation of that terminal nitrogen to generate a very electrophilic carbon and a positively charged nitrogen. This will allow our methanol to come and attack as a nucleophile, eventually undergoing several different proton transfers to allow that sequence to happen again. And subsequent nucleophilic attack followed by proton transfers eventually gets us to our orthoester. So the key here is being able to identify that once the carbon that is a part of some sort of carbonyl and a nitrile is actually a carboxylic acid derivative, once we've protonated the heteroatom located at that position, that turbocharges the electrophilicity of that carbon, thus making it susceptible to nucleophilic attack by weak nucleophiles like alcohols. Repeating that process over and over again allows us to get to this orthoester. If you enjoyed this week's mechanism, give it a thumbs up down below. And for next week, I'd love to see if you could figure out the electron pushing arrow mechanism for this organic transformation. Drop your thoughts as a comment down below and make sure that you subscribe to the channel so that you never miss out on another Mechanism Monday. I'll see you next week.